Okay, so first of all, what is your full name? Kesar Nagra. Okay, and so I'm just going to ask you a bit about your family's immigration story. So who was the first to come to Canada? So it was my uh, dad's uh, grandfather, okay. Basant Singh Bunno, who arrived in October 1906 uh, into Victoria, BC. Okay, and where was he coming from? Uh, he came from Punjab, okay. uh, from a village uh, called Bunno, okay. uh, in the Jalandhar district. Okay, and when was his birthday? Well, records aren't that accurate, but right. uh, paperwork that we have uh, lists 1880 okay. as the date of birth. And so what was his journey to Canada like? Where did he stop? Where did he go? So that we're not certain, but he did arrive on a ship. Okay. Um, and uh, that ship arrived into the port of Victoria okay. in October 1906. Okay. And why did he make the decision to come to Canada? Uh, land of opportunity. Right. Um, the opportunity to uh, better himself mm -hmm. uh, and the opportunity uh, to really uh, venture. Right. Uh, and he was uh, really an entrepreneur yeah. uh, throughout his life. And did he come alone? Yes, he did. Okay, wow. <laughs> and do you know a bit about his family, like his parents' names, or if he had any brothers or sisters? So we do know uh, that uh, his father's name was uh, Nahal uh, okay. Singh uh, Uno. Okay. Uh, don't know his mom's name. Okay. Uh, and in terms of siblings, I'm not aware of any uh, siblings. Okay. Yes. So once he landed in Victoria, what happened? Where did he go? Uh, from Victoria, uh, he moved uh, over to the mainland oh, okay. uh, and for a number of years worked in the Vancouver uh, area mm. and even out in Chilliwack, oh, Rosedale wow. specifically, Okay. Uh, until uh, the lumber mill uh, went bankrupt. And then a group of uh, the early pioneers mm -hmm. uh, moved over to Vancouver Island. Okay. And they set up what became known as the Mayo uh, Lumber Company. Right. And there were a number of shareholders. And our great grandfather, Basant Singh, uh, at one time was the majority shareholder of the Mayo oh. Lumber Company. Okay. And did he know anybody when he came to Canada? Uh, to the best of our knowledge, no. Uh, he did not know anyone here uh, in uh, Canada, let alone uh, the U.S. Okay, and do you know what his first few days were like? Have you heard uh, Unfortunately, don't. Okay. Uh, yes. And so what was life in the Mayo Lumber Company like? Um, you know what, uh, they were a group of entrepreneurs, uh, and when I say a group of entrepreneurs, there was probably half a dozen uh, shareholders, mm -hmm. uh, from Mayo Singh uh, okay. to Doman uh, Singh, uh, Basant Singh, mm -hmm. who was the majority shareholder, uh, along with uh, Kapoor uh, Singh, uh, who uh, at one time was a partner within the uh, Mayo Lumber Company. Uh, they did extremely well. They were okay. able to uh, create a uh, city within a city, uh, which is known as Baldi. Mm. Uh, and they uh, employed uh, a lot of uh, folks over the uh, years. And it was a uh, really a hub mm -hmm. uh, within the Cowichan Valley. And what was Baldi like? Do you know, like... The housing style? From uh, what I uh, had heard growing up, mm -hmm. uh, they called them bunk houses. A lot of uh, families uh, resided there, including single males. Mm -hmm. uh, they worked within the lumber industry at the Mayo Lumber Company or uh, other mills within the uh, close proximity. Uh, it uh, had its own uh, school mm -hmm. uh, and it was quite the robust uh, uh, little town. Right. And where did your great grandpa live? Uh, he lived right in Baldy. Okay. And uh, he lived in Baldy uh, right up until uh, him passing away in 1960. Okay. And did he work in the mills or? He uh, worked in the uh, mill and uh, he helped oversee uh, okay. the lumber production uh, within the uh, lumber mill there in Baldy. Did he ever travel anywhere or? 
Um, not aware if he uh, traveled. He was a very uh, humble, uh, okay. very uh, down to earth uh, mm -hmm. person, uh, very well respected, very well uh, regarded. Um, okay. and, and a lot of these are stories that are right. been uh, shared uh, over the uh, decades. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, people like Mrs. Opal, Wally Opal's uh, mm -hmm. mom. Uh, whose late husband was a very good uh, friend of uh, Basant Singh. Okay, how did they know each other? Um, living in Baldi, oh, okay. uh, living in the Cowichan uh, Valley. Okay. Um, you know, I had the opportunity uh, many years ago, uh, I'm going to say in the mid-2000s, mm -hmm. uh, of actually having a conversation uh, with the late Herb Doman. And my father uh, was there as well. Uh, they were actually both at University Hospital mm -hmm. uh, in two separate uh, rooms, and they happened to bump into each oh, other. by coincidence. By coincidence, okay. and not knowing each other. Uh, they had uh, quite the afternoon of uh, conversations, which I got to listen in on mm -hmm. uh, in terms of um, you know, he was very well regarded, uh, highly mm -hmm. respected, that, um, you know, he was not uh, literate, that uh, okay. he was, you know, very well uh, looked after even uh, in the latter parts of uh, his years mm -hmm. uh, while he resided in uh, uh, Baldi. Okay. And was there a good father in Baldi? Yes, then? there was. Okay. Yes. And would he frequent that area? Uh, him along with everyone else would have uh, been going to the Baldi okay. Gokwara on a uh, regular basis. So they all knew each other, right? What was that like? Y you know what? It was a different time, uh, a different era. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there was a lot more uh, time uh, that people had for one another. Yeah. It was a simpler life. Sure. Um, you know, they had a lot to relate mm -hmm. uh, from hardships they endured yeah. uh, to the right uh, for franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, they you know, worked very, very tirelessly yeah. to help set the uh, forthcoming generations. Mm -hmm. They dealt with a lot of, um, you know, intolerances, both social uh, okay. along with uh, uh, inequality uh, from a justice perspective uh, as well. Uh, and, and if it wasn't for that generation, I think the inroads that we have made uh, as a community, uh, a part of the uh, multicultural fabric of Canada mm -hmm. today, uh, wouldn't have been possible had yeah, it not been for, for that sure. uh, generation. Yeah. And can you tell me a bit more about the intolerances he might have faced? Um, you know, uh, I, I think the intolerances uh, are everything from uh, racial right. uh, to not having the right uh, yeah. to vote, uh, equal rights, even though mm -hmm. you had uh, been very successful uh, in creating uh, an enterprise of business yeah. that was contributing uh, to the betterment of the community on mm -hmm. Vancouver Island. Um, you, you still uh, were uh, treated a little differently because yeah. of the color of your uh, skin. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that didn't uh, allow that generation uh, to think that they weren't uh, capable of um, continuing to move forward. They persevered, right? Yes. Yeah. And do you know a bit about his education, maybe in India or... You know what, um, I'm going to say uh, probably very little oh, okay. uh, education. Um, I'm not certain, um, you know, if he had finished uh, grade 12. Based upon his uh, birth date, you know, I figure he would have been in his early 20s when he arrived okay. uh, here in Canada. And do you know what his life was like in India? Did he live on a farm or... You know what, uh, for that era, um, it would have been living on a farm, mm -hmm. uh, very simple uh, home. Right. Uh, and 
and uh, obviously he had uh, a sense of adventure yeah, uh, for him for to, sure. uh, you know, up and leave, uh, yeah. especially in 1906. Right. Yes. And so where was, did he ever get married? No, oh, okay. uh, he never got married. He did go back on a couple of occasions to India. Okay. Uh, for one reason or another, uh, that marriage never uh, ended up uh, happening for uh, him. Mm -hmm. And did he have any children? He didn't have any children. My uh, dad was uh, the only family that he ever uh, sponsored oh, okay. to uh, bring to Canada. And my dad arrived under the uh, quota system uh, into Canada. Right, okay. And how did your dad know your great-grandfather? Uh, it was a family uh, relationship. Oh, okay. And uh, my grandfather uh, had uh, reached out to him uh, okay. via letter. Uh, along with uh, when Basant Singh was in India, mm -hmm. uh, he had made uh, my grandfather a promise to uh, sponsor uh, one of his sons uh, oh, to Canada. Okay. And did your grandfather ever come to Canada? My grandfather did come to Canada. He okay. uh, didn't arrive until much later in his uh, life, and it was about 1988. Okay. Uh, and he uh, was here for about three or four months. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, you know, Canada uh, was a great uh, country, mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't uh, for him, and he decided yeah. to go back uh, uh, and uh, uh, perished in uh, India. Okay, and what was his village? Uh, a village called Kotala, okay. uh, not very far from uh, Bunno, okay. uh, literally 10 minutes uh, oh, down the okay. road. Okay, so they were like neighbors. Yes. Okay, yes. and so what about your dad? What is his name? Uh, Ajit Singh Nagra. Okay. And what year did he come to Canada? Dad came in 1959. Okay. Uh, when under, was he born? Uh, Dad was born in 1933. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. And how did he come to Canada? So he actually uh, came on an airplane. Okay. Um, he had a stopover in Honolulu. Okay. And uh, he arrived into Victoria on December 24th, 1959. Mm -hmm. And from Victoria, uh, he was picked up. Uh, by Mike Bale okay. and uh, driven uh, to Baldy mm -hmm. uh, and it was Christmas Eve uh, oh, okay. uh, uh, when he arrived uh, in Canada. Okay and did he want to come to Canada or? Yes oh, he, he did. did. Yes. Why? Do you know why? Um, you know what? Uh, land of opportunity, uh, an opportunity uh, to look after oh, his so aging uh, grandfather uh, along with had a young family in India uh, okay. at the time as well. So was he married in India then? Or? Yes, okay. yes, dad was married in India. And then his wife was, your mom was left behind in India? My mom along uh, with uh, the two older uh, kids and a okay. third one which was on the way okay. in February 1960. And then when did they all come over to Canada? They arrived in March 1967 okay. uh, to Vancouver International. And did your dad ever tell you stories of what he would do during his days off, or? Um, you know, the um, the first couple of years were really um, instrumental in terms of shaping uh, dad. They were very uh, difficult years, uh, especially the first three where uh, he worked at uh, a mill in Baldy for a while, and then he worked uh, on the sides of a mountain up in Merritt okay. uh, for... Oh, he moved uh, to Merritt. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, and it was really a moving sawmill where they were uh, cutting logs and sawing them uh, as they were going okay. along the uh, side of the mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, and from there, he ended up moving to Vancouver in 1962, 1963. Okay. Wow. Um, when he, why did he change mills? Like he moved to Merritt from Vancouver Island. Um, it was really uh, looking for work. Oh, so uh, there were no more job opportunities? Th there weren't any opportunities on okay. Vancouver Island uh, right. at the time. And he landed an opportunity with a gentleman by the name of uh, Garm Manik, okay. uh, who resided in Duncan, uh, okay. who had, uh, back then they were mobile uh, sawmills where you would uh, uh, chop the log from the side of the uh, mountain. Okay. And they would uh, saw it and they would uh, uh, 
bring the lumber down mm -hmm. uh, to the road and they would end up uh, uh, piling the uh, cans mm -hmm. there. Were there any safety sort of features or was um, it just... <laughs> you know what, uh, I'm, I'm going to say health and safety probably wasn't at the forefront, right. uh, especially uh, in these remote uh, logging mm -hmm. uh, locations. And what was his education in India? Um, I believe Dad probably had about a grade 8 uh, education okay. when uh, he arrived here. And did he continue it in Canada? Um, Dad uh, learned to speak English. Okay. He learned how to uh, read, uh, and he was able to uh, write, uh, you know, simple uh, uh, sentences. Okay. Yes. So where was he when he sponsored the rest of his family to Canada? Uh, Dad was actually in Vancouver. Okay. And uh, by 1963, mm -hmm. he had moved. Uh, permanently to Vancouver okay. and uh, he was residing in Vancouver uh, and he was working um, in 1963 up until about 1967 uh, mm -hmm. uh, on a full-time basis at the Burke okay. Lumber uh, Company which is at the foot of uh, Yukon Street right. um, and he was also working uh, a second job uh, at Bay Forest uh, Products which was on uh, oh, Falls okay. Creek in Vancouver. How many hours did he work a day? Um, you know what, he was working a day shift and uh, he was working an afternoon shift uh, wow. at the uh, other place. Okay. Yes. Do you know how much he earned back then? Um, you know what, I actually have uh, okay. his T4s from 1963 onward. Uh, in 1963, he made uh, at Burke Lumber a little over $3,900 uh, okay. Canadian. Okay. Okay, so did your dad experience any discrimination or racism while he was in Canada? Um, you know, I think there was overtures of uh, uh, racism. Oh, okay. um, you know, uh, he ended up uh, assimilating into the Canadian uh, okay. culture. Uh, so when I say assimilating into the Canadian culture, um, he, he was not a baptized Sikh, but he had a turban, he had a okay. beard. Uh, when he arrived uh, mm -hmm. in Canada and uh, to assimilate, uh, he ended up uh, shaving his beard oh, and he okay. ended up uh, cutting his hair. Yeah. Um, you know, other than that, um, you know, uh, in the lumber mills, um, the South Asians, as we're known as today, um, you know, you got the heavier, uh, more difficult uh, work versus the uh, easier uh, work. But, mm -hmm. you know, I think in general terms, uh, people really didn't uh, complain. Uh, mm -hmm. They were uh, happy and content that they had good paying uh, jobs. Okay, so were South Asians placed in the more difficult jobs or? Um, when I say they? more difficult jobs, like in the lumber mill, um, you know, uh, you were on the uh, back end of the green chain uh, where the lumber was coming uh, okay. onto uh, and the uh, longer, heavier pieces uh, were being sent off to the uh, back end of the uh, green chain where mm -hmm. the lighter uh, pieces were up front and typically on the back end of the green chain mm -hmm. uh, were more South Asians uh, okay. versus uh, 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 Caucasians or white right. folks. Okay, and so did your dad ever grow his turban back again? No. Okay. Uh, Do you didn't. know why he cut it off? Was it for better job opportunities? It, it was really uh, to assimilate uh, okay. into the uh, Canadian uh, way. Right. Yes. Do, and then did he change his like clothing style? Um, you know what? That entire generation, uh, you know, they were uh, dressed um, when they went out, uh, okay. suit tie, uh, and even when he arrived. Uh, from the pictures uh, that we have seen that we have mm -hmm. um, you know he was always dressed in uh, dress uh, uh, pants uh, okay. dress shirt and a, a tie um, and a jacket as well okay and did he ever go anywhere else within Canada or just BC um, you know what um, 
vacation was not high on uh, uh, Dad's priority list. Right. Uh, he made a couple of trips back to uh, India uh, what over years? the years. Do you know which years he came? Sorry. Do you know which years he came? Uh, he Dad arrived December twenty fourth, nineteen fifty nine. Okay, and then when did he go back? He went back, um, I believe, in nineteen sixty five. Oh, okay. Uh, based upon uh, uh, his passport. Oh, okay. And, yes, and he went back in nineteen seventy five again. Was it just to visit, or? Um, it was to visit. Okay. Yes. And did he ever talk about the changes he noticed? He really didn't uh, talk about uh, uh, the changes uh, mm -hmm. in India because I don't know if there were many significant uh, uh, changes uh, mm -hmm. uh, during his uh, uh, lifetime. Because right. uh, his last trip to India would have been uh, February 1994. Okay. Yes. And what year did he pass away? He passed away February 2010. In Canada? Yes. In, in Richmond. In Richmond. Yes. Okay. Yes. So when he brought you guys over, like what happened? Were you enrolled in schools? So my older three siblings arrived in uh, March 1967. Okay. And uh, they went into elementary high school in okay. Vancouver. Uh, Fleming Elementary at night in uh, 49. Uh, and John Oliver, uh, just over by Argyle and Victoria Drive. How old were they at the time? Um, they were, um, you know, I'm going to say uh, seven up to 15 years. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, seven to 13 years old. Okay. Uh, and uh, myself and my younger brother were both uh, born here in uh, Vancouver at Vancouver General okay. Hospital. Okay. Yes. So did your siblings find it difficult moving to a new country or were they so young they didn't? Um, you know, uh, there was uh, uh, some getting used to mm -hmm. uh, culturally yeah. Um, you know, different expectations, okay. uh, different priorities. They had to learn English, I'm assuming. They had to learn oh, okay. uh, English. Uh, they spent, uh, you know, their summers uh, working in the uh, farms to help okay. uh, support the uh, family and uh, help, um, you know, uh, pay for uh, things around the home. Okay, yes. wow. And did they ever talk about any discrimination they might have faced? Um, you know, uh, the late 60s, early 70s, uh, I think uh, in general in Vancouver, uh, there was uh, some uh, racial uh, tensions mm -hmm. uh, where uh, there were fights, uh, yeah. there were... Um, you know, some language that was being used, um, you know, uh, people were referred to as uh, Hindus. Oh, okay. um, but a lot of that uh, started subsiding by the, uh, I'm going to say the mid-70s. Okay. Yes. So, did this, what was the South Asian community like? Was it large in Vancouver at that time, or? It wasn't uh, large as it is uh, today. It was mm -hmm. more concentrated. Uh, okay. And it was really an era where everyone kind of knew everyone because okay. the, the uh, masses just weren't uh, there. Uh, and, it, and there was really a sense of uh, family, uh, camaraderie, mm -hmm. uh, a sense of uh, belonging. Uh, there was a lot more uh, social hosting where you know people visited one another for afternoon tea okay. uh, a lot more family uh, get together mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, dinner evenings uh, on the weekends uh, going to uh, the park whether it was stanley park or okay. queen elizabeth park uh, for family outings picnics mm -hmm. that's awesome and when were you born i was born february 1969 Okay, and so what was your experience like growing up as the child of immigrants? Um, you know what, no different than uh, anyone uh, else, mm -hmm. um, you know, born, brought up uh, here in Vancouver, Richmond. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, went through the uh, schooling system. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and your dad was still working at this time? Yes, uh, dad didn't retire until uh, December 1993. Okay. Uh, and dad actually retired uh, at the age of 60. 
Okay. Yes. Nice. And your mom looked after the house? Yes. Mom was a homemaker uh, her entire life. Okay. And mom's, uh, you know, one um, famous saying was that, uh, you know, her job was raising uh, her five uh, boys and she never had to work outside of uh, uh, the family home. Oh, no sisters. Wow. Yes. <laughs> okay. Did your dad sponsor anybody when he... Um came to Canada? Yes, uh, dad sponsored, um, you know, uh, both uh, nephews, uh, brother-in-laws, immediate family. Um, and I've always said um, our great-grandfather, Basan Singh, was the seed mm -hmm. uh, that got planted in October 1906. Okay. And dad was one of the branches off that seedling. Uh, and from that one seedling, uh, during the 70s, uh, my dad sponsored a number of family and friends okay. uh, from India. And that uh, tree has now got, um, you know, uh, dozens of uh, branches in right. uh, their own offsprings. Uh, and, um, you know, there's probably well over, you know, I'm going to say 200 uh, people within uh, uh, that tree uh, okay. today that are uh, directly here because of uh, dad. Wow. And did your dad ever talk about the changes he noticed in Canada throughout his years living here from when he first came? He did. And, you know, uh, those changes, uh, both good and, um, you know, progress and, you know, the good, uh, the uh, the better quality uh, right. in general, yeah. um, the opportunities that, um, you know, this current generation, whether it's uh, Gen mm -hmm. X or uh, the millennials uh, have, um, that uh, the community has come a very long way yeah. uh, from, um, you know, the late 1950s, the 60s and mm -hmm. uh, 70s. Um, you know, I've got, uh, you know, two siblings that have uh, done remarkably uh, well. One who has just recently retired after a 30 plus year okay. uh, career uh, within the mining industry. Mm -hmm. uh, another sibling uh, who is a president managing partner of a, a private equity uh, company based out of uh, Toronto. Wow, that's amazing. And do you have any family left in India? Um, we don't have any immediate family okay. uh, left in India. Every uh, one from an immediate perspective mm -hmm. uh, is uh, either in Canada, the U.S. or the U.K. Okay. And have you ever been to India? I have actually. Okay. I've uh, been back a few times, uh, 2011, uh, 2016 okay. and 2018. And what's that like going back? You know, for myself, um, I have country. really never experienced the real uh, India. Mm -hmm. uh, my experience with India has been uh, staying in a, a four or five star hotel, whether it's in Punjab, oh, okay. whether it's in Delhi, Agra, I've been to Bangalore, to Calcutta. Okay. Uh, it's a, truly an amazing uh, country, very um, hospitable, mm -hmm. very uh, happy-go-lucky yeah. uh, people. We still have our ancestral uh, uh, property uh, where the okay. home uh, stood. Have you been uh, there? Uh, I have. Okay. Uh, the home is no longer there, okay. but uh, because uh, the home had sat vacant since 1967 okay. and just uh, would decay over the years, mm -hmm. uh, it was eventually um, uh, demolished, okay. um, you know, probably some 30 uh, years ago. Okay, that's yes. sad. And did you ever experience any racism when you were growing up? You know what, honestly, uh, I didn't. Okay. Um, you know, uh, I grew up pretty much in Richmond. Uh, the neighborhood we grew up in was predominantly uh, immigrant Germans. Okay. Uh, okay. And a number of the kids that I grew up with, uh, you know, it's almost like we've gone full circle. Uh, we grew up at uh, the number five in Canby area of Richmond, okay. and uh, and now a handful of us uh, live uh, at the Blundell, the number one okay. road area yeah, of Richmond. Yeah. And we uh, all got uh, kids about the same age oh, uh, as well. That's awesome. Yes. And did you ever like play with your dad growing up, or 
do activities with her? Um, you know what? Dad used to drive us to uh, flag football. Uh, we okay. played flag football in uh, Vancouver at Moberly um, uh, Park. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, in terms of uh, playing, um, you know, uh, I'm going to say uh, piggyback rides uh, through the um, uh, living room. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and did you ever all go back and visit Bali together with your dad? No, uh, I don't recall as a child, uh, but I know my older siblings mm -hmm. uh, went back to Bali okay. uh, on a handful of occasions uh, with dad, and I know dad took them mm. uh, to Bali when they first arrived in 1967 oh. as well. And did they ever talk about what that was like, what Bali was like? Um, not. Uh, to a great degree because my dad only spent uh, a few months in Baldy uh, before okay. uh, uh, moving over to Vancouver right. uh, and then over to Merritt. Okay, yes. that's awesome. And do they have any memories of your dad? Uh, my uh, siblings, yes. Okay, yes, like do. any special memories? Um, you know, I'm going to defer that uh, to my brother. Okay. <laughs> Do you have anything? Do you have any special memories with your dad? Basically, going to Baldy uh, in the '67, yeah. he took us, mm -hmm. and then to Port Alberni, and seeing Baldy was basically a very small single home. Okay. And what were the, the homes Gordora, like? The homes were old, okay. but they were uh, still good, good uh, standing, but they're pretty small. Yeah. Okay. Very single uh, home. There would have been no more than about a dozen or so. Like made out of wood? Yes, oh, yes. Okay. Mostly wood and uh, and the Gordora still stands there today. Okay, right. And I went back and took my own family about 10 years ago. Okay. To Has it changed? Is it still, um, the people, lots of people still live there? There were not too many people living there. The houses and the Gordora still stood. Mm -hmm. And I do plan to go back maybe, hopefully this year. Okay. To see it again, what changes has, has occurred. Yeah. And uh, so. Okay. And do you know if your dad was involved in the community life? Like any organizations he may have been involved um, in? You know, uh, he wasn't actively uh, involved, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, he did support uh, the building of the Raw Street uh, Temple, okay. which opened in 1969. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from a supporting the community uh, perspective, uh, my parents uh, both very quietly uh, supported uh, uh, the building of the uh, Raw Street Temple. Um, you know, uh, by donating uh, for the construction uh, fund of that uh, facility. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the latter uh, part of their uh, life, uh, they were supporters of uh, Richmond General uh, Hospital okay. and gave quite generously uh, to them. And to commemorate, uh, you know, their quiet giving, uh, the hospital uh, in 2015 mm -hmm. uh, actually uh, unveiled a, a picture of mom and dad, okay. uh, which is uh, displayed in one of the uh, corridors uh, for their generosity. Oh, that's so sweet. And what was a day in his life like after he retired? After Dad's retirement, um, you know what, uh, he spent uh, time with all of his uh, grandkids that brought uh, okay. a lot of uh, joy and excitement to him. Uh, he uh, was very passionate about uh, gardening. Okay. So when I say gardening, everything from his uh, pear tree to his fig and his cherry okay. tree uh, to having the Midas touch to growing. Uh, tomatoes, peppers, mm. to uh, cilantro, okay. uh, tomate, to onions, mm. and he would spend tireless uh, and countless hours uh, day in and day out uh, from about May till uh, September wow. uh, tendering his uh, garden and harvesting uh, and keeping with the principles of uh, Sikhism, uh, sharing his bounty with uh, friends and family, okay. with neighbors. Uh, and actually hand delivering uh, his uh, uh, vegetables mm -hmm. uh, to folks. And people okay. used to love uh, uh, getting 
uh, you know, the chapan kadu or the homegrown uh, tomatoes from him. That's so sweet. Yes. And does he remain in contact with people he used to know, like in Merit or in Faldi? You, um, you know what? A lot of um, the folks that lived in the smaller towns uh, eventually retired uh, within mm -hmm. Metro Vancouver. Oh, okay. Um, you know, uh, Dad uh, did keep in uh, contact, okay. uh, but the majority of his circle was within Vancouver. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a uh, a family member that lived up in uh, Golden oh, okay. uh, that visited Dad very uh, regularly throughout uh, the year. Um, we had family up in Kamloops, and we, uh, as kids, as a family, we would go up to Kamloops uh, mm -hmm. and spend a lot of time uh, there, uh, especially during the uh, summer months. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, in the 60s and 70s, we had family on Vancouver Island. Mm -hmm. uh, so there were a number of uh, regular uh, trips over to Port Alberni okay. uh, and uh, over to Duncan as well. That's awesome. Yeah. And did he ever go traveling to other countries after he retired? Um, other than uh, a trip to India uh, via England, uh, no, travel uh, was not something that was uh, high on Dad's uh, priority, priority list. list right. yeah. Or around Richmond, was there any special places he would go to? Um, you know, in terms of special places, um, you know, uh, visiting the temple in Richmond on Number mm -hmm. Five Road, okay. um, the India Cultural Center, uh, Wong's Nursery, where he would okay. buy his uh, vegetable uh, plants from, uh, Lansdowne Mall. And he lived uh, on a farm. Okay. We lived in a home. Okay, yes. but he still had a garden? Yeah, we had a fair size yard uh, okay. in Richmond. And uh, I'm going to say growing up, uh, you know, a quarter of the backyard was his garden. Okay. Uh, and towards the latter part, I'm going to say from about 2000 up until about 2009, 80% mm -hmm. um, of the backyard had been converted uh, into a, wow. uh, a vegetable garden. That's awesome. Yes. Did he also garden in India? Do you know? Um, you know what? Um, Gardening in India, uh, you're growing your own uh, vegetables uh, mm -hmm. because you were uh, self-sufficient. Uh, it was really a passion uh, that oh, uh, grew yeah. and uh, blossomed in the uh, uh, retirement uh, <coughs> years for him. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. And if you could share a message based on your own personal life story to the youth of today, what would you want to tell them? It's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, Canada is a land of opportunity right. and I think if you set your mind to anything, anything is possible mm -hmm. and as generations come along, I think we shouldn't take for an advantage uh, what we have uh, and we should be doing everything to learn more about the history, mm -hmm. uh, the challenges, the struggles, the adversity yeah. uh, that the original pioneers uh, went through, the struggles and the hardships. Sure. The things that we take for granted today uh, are because of the seeds that were uh, laid uh, well over 120 years yeah, ago. For sure. And are there any other special stories you can think of off the top of your head, maybe your dad shared, or of your great-grandpa, or even of your own life? Um, you know, the one thing that um, stands out for myself is, um, you know, the family outings, mm -hmm. uh, the love uh, from a generation uh, yeah. from my parents' era uh, that is still there and evident okay. uh, from both family, uh, relatives, and friends uh, that still uh, reach out on a regular basis, even though both of our uh, parents have now uh, passed away over the last few years. Mm -hmm. uh, that sense of belonging mm -hmm. uh, along with uh, not leaving really uh, a void that your parents aren't there because God aunts and uncles and uh, right. friends of our uh, parents that still 
uh, play a very active uh, okay. role in our uh, lives today. So when you grew up, your relatives were very involved in your life? I'm going to say the immediate uh, family. Oh, okay. um, you know, regular uh, family uh, get-togethers. Oh, um, nice. You know, whether it was uh, Friday evenings or Saturdays mm -hmm. uh, at our house or us going over to someone else's, one of the family uh, members' homes. Okay. Uh, so there's a lot more social interaction because yeah. uh, life was a lot more simpler and it wasn't right. as busy. Yeah. And what changes have you noticed throughout your childhood, Canada evolving? You know what? Change is wonderful. Uh, I think we've progressed. Uh, as a society in mm -hmm. uh, general, we're much more uh, tolerant, we're much yes. more accepting. Yeah. Um, I, I believe uh, that we should never uh, forget where we've come mm -hmm. from. Uh, I was born, brought up, um, you know, I consider myself a secular Sikh. Uh, by heritage uh, and by culture, but that heritage and culture is uh, important. Mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah. And what do you do nowadays? Uh, I'm a professional. I uh, okay. manage a uh, private uh, company and mm -hmm. um, you know I enjoy. I've been afforded uh, a number of opportunities okay. uh, over the years. Uh, and uh, really enjoy getting up and uh, going into the office uh, every day. That's amazing. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>